my friends welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is Tori if you're new and I am so happy that you're here today we're gonna be doing this really fun like video structure of my recommendations for if you've read a certain book I think you would really like another one and I'll give you my reasons why I think you would like those so if you like this video please make sure that you give it a big thumbs up subscribe to my youtube channel grab your coffee grab your water grab your tea grab a snack and let's talk about some books If you have read the Fable and Namesake duology, my recommendation for you would be to read the All the Stars and Teeth and All the Tides of Fate duology as well. Fable and Namesake is a duology that has a really special place in my heart and I feel like I don't talk about it enough. I read this at the end of 2020 and it was the book and the duology that really rekindled my love for reading and it was just like a downhill spiral from that book going forward ever since then I've been reading like an absolute maniac. Fable and Namesake are written by Adrian Young and we follow our main character Fable who is living in this very tropical island sailor type world and she has a really difficult dynamic with her family. Her father abandons her on this island that is not easy to live on. She basically has to fight for every meal and she's trained herself to become a diver of sorts and she's diving for precious stones and gems in order to sell them to get her next meal. Her ultimate goal is to earn enough money to get off this island and find her father to ask him why he abandoned her after all this time. Fable is such a beautiful character. The story is so incredible. There is a romance that's involved and I love West, who is the main love interest in that story. It's such a good summer read as well because it's beachy islands, sailor vibes, all kind of like pirate-esque, but there's no actual like pirates per se in it. Um, it is just such a wonderful, wonderful experience. And the reason why I think that All the Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace is a really good pairing or recommendation off of that book was because that's what I used it for. So I was not over Fable and Namesake. I needed more. I needed to experience a similar world, a similar main character, and that's what this gave me. It was such a fun time. So similar setting, except there's a bit more magic in this world, which is really, really fun. So we follow our main character, Amora Montara. She's a princess on the island kingdom of Visidia, and there are a bunch of different islands that they kind of rule over. Here's a gorgeous map for you. And each of these islands has, has people of different magic types. And so she has been training her entire life to become High Animancer, who is the master of souls, basically like the master of, or like the highest level of magic in this world. So she has been training her whole life. It's never been a choice to secure her place on the throne. She has to become this title. And to prove her mastery over her magic, she has to do this demonstration in front of the population, essentially. And then it doesn't necessarily go her way. So she is, it's questionable of whether she's deemed fit to rule and she's forced to flee. She makes this deal with a pirate type character and love interest called Bastion. She makes a deal that he'll help her prove that she is fit to rule if she'll help him reclaim his stolen magic. They sail to a bunch of different places. There's amazingly descriptive and super fun sirens in this book. And again, the magic is so much fun. So these two books are very similar. If you want similar vibes, a similar aesthetic, I think that you will really like this book. If you read An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir, I think that you would absolutely love We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Faisal. The world and the creatures like the magical creatures and the magic is similar in these two books but the characters are a little bit different. 
I would say I was much more emotionally attached to the characters that are in the In Ember in the Ashes series over the We Hunt the Flame characters. However, what I thought was really interesting as well is we have characters in here, our main characters, who are extremely moral. They're fighting for good and in We Hunt the Flame we also have a main character who is very moral and they're fighting for the right thing coupled with our other main character who is very morally gray. So that was a really interesting contrast because I'm finding it few and far between where you find a main character who is moral at this point because who doesn't love a morally gray character or love interest etc but these books do showcase characters who are very moral and good to the heart and good to their bones and it's kind of refreshing to read a book like that every once in a while so that's why i think they're similar my heart and soul will always belong to an ember in the ashes series but We Hunt the Flame was written very beautifully. The writing style was extremely lyrical and descriptive in We Hunt the Flame, and the worlds are very similar. My next pairing, I have A Spindle Splintered by Alexi Harrow. I'm recommending that if you read this and you loved it and you want something a little bit similar to read Grimrose Girls by Laura Pohl. The reason I'm pairing these two is because I thought that Grimrose Girls was really fun. It wasn't the best written thriller, if I'm being honest. I gave it two stars because it's quick, it's really fun, and it's easy to get through, and you don't have to think too much about it. Whereas A Spindle Splintered, I believe I gave it four stars, and this is a novella as well. But the reason they're so similar and they pair very well is because they both follow uh, spinoffs of of classic fairy tales. So A Spindle Splintered is kind of a spinoff of Sleeping Beauty, and I'll read you this little blurb because I think, I think it sums it up extremely well. Sleeping Beauty is the worst fairy tale, pretty much any way you slice it. It's aimless, amoral, and chauvinistic as shit. Even amongst the other nerds who majored in folklore, Sleeping Beauty is nobody's favorite. The romantic girls like Beauty and the Beast, vanilla girls like Cinderella, goth girls like Snow White, the only the dying girls like Sleeping Beauty. So our main character in A Spindle Splintered has a terminal illness and she gets the opportunity to unite in some way with other Sleeping Beauties. And it is just a really wonderful novella. Since it's a novella, I'm not going to say really anything else about it because I don't want to give too much away. But if you end up getting a hard copy, the illustrations in this book are stunning. If you want more of something that's cut from the same cloth as this, I'm recommending Grimrose Girls because Grimrose Girls is a kind of murder mystery. A little bit dark academia because it takes place at a very elite preparatory school in a castle. Murders are taking place that are mimicking classic fairy tale deaths. I thought it was really interesting because I think that both books are done fairly well and in a really intriguing way. My next recommendation, I don't think anyone is going to be surprised hearing me recommend either of these book series, but I'm going to tell you why if you read one I think that you would really like the other because this is a little bit different. If you've read and loved the Caraval series, I recommend that you read the Cruel Prince series or the Folk of the Air series, excuse me. These are very different in terms of the worlds that they take place in and the writing styles. However, I'm recommending them because the main characters in each of these books are some of my favorite main characters that I've ever read, ever. Okay? There are sister dynamics in both of these that are absolutely wonderful to read about. Like, they're not straightforward, they're not just your classic sweet um, sister dynamic. Like A lot happens in both of these books. The romances in these books are absolutely stunning even though they are completely different from each other. This is gonna be enemies to lovers. This is much more, like there's multiple romances with multiple sisters and it's very messy at times and it constantly keeps you guessing about who's who and what's what and what are they doing, whereas this is much more of a, a pretty straightforward like enemies to lovers in the best way. The tension between these two 
oh there you can't find anything better so although these worlds are very different the writing style is also very different Stephanie Garber is extremely lyrical it's like a modern fairy tale that you're reading very girly fluffy lyrical flowery whereas the cruel prince with holly black i was really surprised at first and i couldn't tell if i liked her writing style because she's very direct she's very straightforward no nonsense type deal but it was really nice because each of these writing styles matches the characters in these books perfectly perfectly so that's a that's a weird one for you i'm curious if you do end up picking up one of these because you've read the other let me know let me know what you think about this pairing if you have read kingdom of the wicked i recommend that you read a touch of darkness by scarlet st Clair. these two if I had to give you a preference of which one I like more in terms of a romanticy series, I would by far tell you to read A Touch of Darkness. It is a Hades and Persephone retelling that is so stunning. I am a Hades and Persephone stan to the end. I loved it so, so much. Fun, you don't have to think too hard about it. But it's really good and I got so emotionally attached to those characters, that entire world. I think it's stunning. That is just my preference. Can we maybe not sit right there? You just want to be involved. Our main character is entangled with a prince of hell in this one. So it's similar in terms of that Hades dynamic of king of the underworld princes of the underworld they're both romanticy series that are just really fun you know you're not here for a literary moment you're here for really fun kind of smutty romances my favorite love interest archetype is like the hades archetype tall dark handsome evil dark and broody that's what these are like hades in a touch of darkness is Wrath in Kingdom of the Wicked is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful man. Most of the scenes he wants to have his shirt off, like, come on. My friends, I understand how chaotic this is. Like, you don't have to tell me. Um, I'm not even going to pretend like it's the same day. This is what happened. I was editing and I was like, I am coming up with so many more. If you liked this, then read this. That I was like, I need to add these in. Should I like wear the same shirt and shit? And then I was like, absolutely fucking not. Like, we're just gonna do this because. Welcome to my channel. Anyways, I have a couple more that I would have been remiss if I didn't mention them to you because I'm just here to give you your fantasy recommendations. This one is also a quite chaotic recommendation but if you liked the invisible life of Addie larue i'm recommending to you small favors by aaron a craig now there is one distinction that i do want to make between these two books the invisible life of Addie larue is a masterpiece like the writing how well thought out it is obviously it's more of like a Epic isn't the right word, but it's kind of more of like an epic love story in terms of it moves very slowly, like there's definitely parts of action and then parts of reflection, if you will, like there's like ups and downs in that book. However, I think that Small Favors is similar and I really thought a lot about this. In terms of the love interests with Luke, in Addie LaRue and Whitaker in this one. I have never encountered another fantasy book until I came across this one that had to deal with like gods of the dark, gods that you're not supposed to make deals with, gods that are just here to cause havoc and like that's where they get their kicks from. You will find that in Small Favors. The vibes of these two books are very different, but if you really liked the devil daddy, like, evilness that Luke brought to the table in Addie LaRue, I think that you would like Small Favors. But again, I need to preface it with this. The writing style, like, Addie LaRue is on the next level. 
the vibes are very different. This is like a fantasy horror. So I would say this is a little bit more fast paced. However, it's that love interest that if you're looking for something similar in terms of love interest, I think that this comes close. So there's that. The next recommendations that I have for you, if you have read Only a Monster by Vanessa Len, so this is a YA romanticy where our main character has two love interests. She finds out kind of like coming to age that she has this power and she is considered a monster and it's kind of faded love with a monster hunter. The magic system in this is pretty well thought out in my opinion. It's time travel magic which was very intimidating to me at first because I felt like that could get very confusing very quickly but it really wasn't so my recommendation if you loved this and you're looking for more like monster romance type thing the coldest touch by isabel sterling was a lot of fun also these are both fairy loot editions like how stunning are these love you fairy loot the coldest touch is a bit different because this is a sapphic romance our main characters are in high school and kind of coming of age our main character elise finds out that she has a magical power that she absolutely hates because when she touches anyone she can see and experience how that person is going to die so like really not ideal and she's trying to figure a way to either control the power or like really get rid of it and she has this vampire claire who comes into her life and says sis i can help you with this this one is more of a monster to monster type love interest whereas only a monster is that monster monster hunter faded love but they're both really fun they're both very surface level fun really quick to get through YA romances but both a good time the last recommendation that I had to give to you I've mentioned this before but I wanted to mention it like in an official capacity in this video because I think that they're paired very very well so if you have read Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff and you enjoyed Gabe's character, meaning you enjoy just that grumpy, gruff, monster hunter, moody, kind of stressy and depressy at times, but like he's really funny, um, tall, dark, handsome. If that's just what you're looking for, I don't know about you, that's all of me and a cup of tea. I would recommend reading the Witcher series. So I'm holding up The Last Wish by Andrzej Sapowski. This is the first one that I've read. I've yet to continue on with the series yet. I really, really want to. I don't know what's holding me back. I just need to like get my priorities in line. But the main characters in these books are just hunks. Like they are just gorgeous, stunning, broody, grumpy, Again, tall, dark, handsome, except Geralt has the white witcher hair, but he's still kind of like dark and broody, if you know what I mean. They both are, I don't know why I keep just like switching them. My arm is getting tired holding up this chunker, that's probably why. They just kind of give off the same energy. Gabe has a lot of tragedy in his life. Like, this book is much more heavy topics, really dark. A very emotional ride whereas with what I've read in The Last Wish this was much more lighthearted um, mostly because of Dandelion he brought a lot of light to the story but it does get very intense with the monster battles I mean same thing with Empire of the Vampire but what I've heard with the Witcher series is that it does start to get much darker as you continue on with the series it, it gets darker heavier so again this is only like the 0.5 book this isn't even the true official start to the series but this was very like light-hearted the characters were really fun there's a lot of banter it's hilarious and then also like gabe is really funny in this one but it's not in that light-hearted way so there are definitely differences between the two but look at how much smaller <laughs> the last wish is compared to this huge ass book sorry and they're both extremely well written like I think that these compare very well in terms of the 
literary moment that you're going to have with both of these, they both hold their own with their writing style very, very well. Okay, I promise that we're done. I'm not going to jump back in here. I will pass it over to the old Tori to end this video. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I always leave both of my Instagrams linked in the description box as well. If you want to follow me on there, we have a good time. And I will see you in my next one. Bye, friends.